God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our family, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As in previous years, we will be lighting the Advent candles. And to lead us into that part of our service, we're going to join together and sing the very first verse of hymn 165, Advent candles tell the story. It's just verse one. There will be, um, I'm not sure what colour it will be, yellow, for, for you to say, as uh, mine are in green and yours are in yellow. <laughs> okay. So Advent, first of Advent. It's Advent, not yet Christmas. It's time for you and me to prepare, to get ready for the coming of the Christ child. The day will come, so now we prepare to welcome let us take time to reflect for ourselves. When God reigns, let us reflect on the path in life we have chosen. When God reigns, let us reflect on God's love for us and all people. When God reigns, let us reflect, be awake and be ready when God reigns. Let us prepare to receive Christ, the most important gift of all, when God reigns. So let us light our first candle. And I've already asked Georgie. No, I don't want to. Edward, do you want to do it? Hang on a minute. It is for you and me as we watch and wait. Is it going to do it? Yes. <laughs> So we're going, to, do you want to do the hymn? Oh, that's right. So we're going to sing our first hymn, which is in Singing the Faith 177. Lo, he comes with clouds descending.
is this here. I just want to join with Jennifer in welcoming Kath um, as she comes to commission Caroline. Are you excited, Caroline? Very much, she said, very much. And just to mention that the light switch on will be next Saturday um, from 12 noon. There's activity from 12 noon until about 5 when the lights come on. But I think the Churches Together bus will be out and they're looking for volunteers to help with crafts. So um, if you want to see me or Caroline or Joe, we'll fill you in. So I had that text message this morning, so that's why I'm bringing it now. Let's bow our heads and pray. Let's pray. Live in God. As we light the first Advent candle, and the first flicker of your coming is kindled in our hearts, may the flame of our desire for justice and peace burn brightly within us, releasing our lives, our churches, and our world, the transforming power of your spirit. Come, let us prepare to meet God. Let us prepare ourselves to help bring in God's kingdom. Let us prepare to worship him. And so we come before God with our adorations. We praise you, living God, for these days of Advent, for the opportunity they offer to reflect on Scripture and to prepare our hearts and our minds for the coming of your Son. As we set out on our journey, may we find a stillness that is your presence with us, leading us on to Bethlehem, where our spirits can soar towards the light of your eternal love, revealing in the Christ child. But Lord, as we come before you in worship, and in adoration, we are aware that there have been times when we have forgotten you, when we have sinned against you and each other. So I invite us all in silence to confess our sins to God, and let's pray for God's forgiveness. We spend a moment in quiet. Advent God, forgive us, we pray, when our perceptions for your coming, the coming of your Son, is superficial and we don't invest our whole selves into them, prayerfully, practically, and purposefully. May we not be left with regrets and if only but adapt to the challenges of our lives and our world with the grace of your love and with the power of your spirit. Forgive us, O Lord, and make us the people we need to be. Amen. Friends, I always remind us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. We basically lie if we say we have no sin. But the scripture, the Bible tells us, if we confess those sins, God is able. And I've given you the opportunity for you to do it and for me to do it. That if we confess those sins, God is able to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hear God's word of love and grace to you and to me, that our sins are forgiven.
Thanks be to God. Amen. Hope you feel it better now. So we can come now to the church family news. Are there any news that we would like to share? Robin Mike is around. We brought some uh, Christmas cake from our lady. She no longer can get here, but she hasn't forgotten everybody. She loves you all, and uh, it's upstairs. Now, whether we could take today, I know the oblong one is non-alcoholic. The, the other one, I'm sure, will have alcoholic. <laughs> He said she's not able to come any longer, but she's still making a contribution. That's what it is. She's still making a contribution. You've got a story to tell us or something? The wobbly tooth has fallen out. The wobbly first tooth has fallen out. What did you do with it? The tooth fairy gave me three pounds. Three pounds. <laughs> Have you got any more to, to give to the tooth fairy? You might get six pounds. <laughs> oh, anybody else have any um, tooth that's going to come out? You can get three pounds. <laughs> I've got three that come out every night, but I don't think it's anybody for it. <laughs> um, it's that time of year again. 18th of December is our festival service. Uh, if you would like to take part, meet me after coffee or bring your coffee through to wherever we can find the space. Uh, it's not all seen and dancing, many of us can't do that anymore. But if you're if you'd like to take part, there are a lot of sitting down bits to do. So come and see me afterwards. Thank you. Remember that lots of sitting down. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, lunch club, yes. Lunch club. Free lunches? Yes. It is not, it's a pay what you can afford. So if you can't afford it that week, uh, you can pay nothing. Yeah, lunch club on Tuesday, we're having a vegetable soup, roast beef and yolk pudding, a vegetarian alternative, and one of Sally's chocolate puddings to finish with. So, all oh, rice pudding, if you want that chocolate. So, put your names up, please, because I'll, I'll be uh, buying the food tomorrow. Please come and support. If you have never been, please come. Anybody else? I'm coming this side. I've had a few this way. Any any news this side? Any news in the choir? We got some news. When people watch me strange, I normally think that there's some news. <laughs> Oh, Sally's worried about the pudding. Is it the chocolate one or is it the rice pudding? Sally's on another wave now. <laughs> no, we were just asking which pudding you were worried about. This must be church family news too, because some of you would know I had a a pass out session at the men's um, dinner on, on Thursday. They sent me to see the doctor. The doctor sent me back. Another doctor sent me back to see my real doctor. And no doctors have any records and there's nothing on the computer. So they haven't done anything really with me. So I'm going to be making another appointment. So that's why I am today. Keep praying for me. And um, thank you for all your prayers, those who have been prayed. Any 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 finals? No? Okay. Any birthdays? Any anniversaries of anything? I'm missing out on something in the back there. I don't know what it is. Well, if there's no more, there's still one more bit of family. Um, um, news of Caroline being um, accredited today as a lay preacher. So I will invite Kath to come and to 
get things going. And Caroline, please come out. It gives me great pleasure to be with you this morning again. Uh, you maybe remember that I came once before to um, assess a service that Caroline took uh, as Synod Convener of Ministries. Um, Jill Fletcher, our lay preachers commissioner, was also in on that assessment and she's on Zoom again today. So I feel as if we're all together again on this great occasion. Hear this, all you peoples, give ear all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, we are now to commission as an assembly accredited lay preacher, Caroline Pathak, who has successfully completed her training and development by transfer from the Methodist course and completed URC requirements and assessments and so has been recognized by Yorkshire Synod and accredited by the General Assembly of the United Reformed Church. And I invite Caroline to share with us a statement concerning her faith and calling. My calling as teacher of sharing the word of God has not come dramatically it has not come as a sudden thing or sudden event that took place, but it has been growing gradually in my life, mainly because of the miracle of Jesus' love that continued to nurture my faith from my childhood by my parents, by my teachers, by the minister, those who had pastoral oversight, my, my colleagues, my classmates, and the list can go on. Uh, with my life journey and uh, the greatest commission of Jesus Christ to preach the gospel, go and preach the gospel, stays very close to my heart. When I used to search the scriptures and when the first time I read from Isaiah, who shall go? Who will be sent? Who will go for us? And the response that Isaiah gives, that here I am, send me. And it felt like it was my response to the Lord, that Lord send me. And I'm so thankful and grateful to God for putting that urge in my heart, inner urge to share the gospel that I first heard from my childhood and it continued to grow. So as Jesus' love continued to grow and still continues to nurture my faith, I pray and it is my heart's desire that I share the gospel and God's love that came to this world for the whole world, whoever hears his word, so that none can be left without the good news of the gospel. And that is what my calling and that confirms and affirms by various ways through his scriptures, through people's you know, affirmation. And that's what I feel is the call to ministry for me. If you are able, will you please stand? Caroline, do you confess again your faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Do you reaffirm your trust in Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord, promising to follow him and seeking to do his will all the days of your life? Trusting in God's ways, I do. Do you believe that the word of God in the Old and New Testaments, discerned under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, is the supreme authority for the faith and conduct of all God's people? I do. Do you believe that you are called 
to preach the gospel of God's love and mercy revealed in Jesus Christ. I do. Do you undertake to exercise your ministry in accordance with the statement concerning the nature, faith and order of the United Reformed Church? I do. And as members of this church, if you feel able, please respond with the words we do. Do you, the members of this local church, accept Caroline as a lay preacher and promise her your prayerful support and encouragement in this ministry? We do. Please be seated. Let us pray. Ever gracious God, you have brought us into your church and made us your witnesses giving us the gifts we need to proclaim the gospel of your holy love. We give thanks today for Caroline, whom you have called to be a preacher of your word. And in your name, we commission her to the office of assembly accredited lay preacher. Inspire her with your Holy Spirit so that she will be fired with passion and always seek deeper understanding of the gospel she proclaims. Sustain her in her calling, when it is easy and when it is difficult. May she find eager hearers who respond to her proclamation and give her their support and encouragement. Keep her humble, but make her aware of what she brings to the life and well-being of the church as through her preaching, the gospel is proclaimed. Keep her ever hopeful and keep her ever joyful. Bring her and all of us at the last to full maturity in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. So Caroline, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only head of the church, and in accordance with the decision of Yorkshire Synod and of the General Assembly, I declare you are commissioned to the Office of Assembly Accredited Lay Preacher in the United Reformed Church. And in token of this, we give you the certificate and badge. That is a welcome on behalf of Synod, but uh, can I ask Steve, please, if you'll come and welcome Caroline on behalf of the church. Caroline, it is with the greatest of pleasure, on behalf of us all of the Airport Coast, to extend to you a matter of pleasure. Congratulations on your appointment. We know you will be a fantastic asset to the UNC ministry team. It just comes so natural to you. And you are very, very devoted. You've been a fabulous asset to this church. We know you'll continue to be so with God's blessing. Thank you. Thank you very much. So humble. Thank you. Can I say something? I did not mention my husband, he's not a chicken. And he has been my greatest support throughout this time for to be in the ministry of the world. So I want to thank him. Strengthen you with his Holy Spirit and keep you faithful to Christ all your days. Amen. And may I thank as well Deacon Ali for letting us take part of his service along. Thank you very much. Welcome, Caroline. <coughs> What a wonderful day it is today. A lot's happening, and it's Advent Sunday, so when it just began, we're going to sing a carol that tells us an Advent carol that tells us about what happened long, long, long ago. How prophets foretold the coming of Jesus. Now, most times we hear about Advent, the big question is, what is Advent all about? Especially to the young ones, do you know what Advent is about? 
Do you know what Advent is about? Oh, that's a very good one. Waiting for Jesus. In my round of applause. You, you are right. You are right. So we're going to see now an Advent carol about Jesus. Foretold by the prophets. 170 and singing the faith. Long ago, prophets told. After which the young ones will go to the... Um, their teaching session. Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 2 verses 1 to 5. The future house of God. The word that Isaiah son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither 
shall they learn war anymore? O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And our gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. The necessity for watchfulness. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So, too, will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. No one knows the day or the hour. My sister, first let me congratulate Caroline on your behalf on the achievement of being a president and a preacher on this first Sunday of the Christian year. Church, I pray that you will continue to support her with your prayers, that you will continue to share with her in the worship that you lead, and that you will receive God's word through her. Our blessing and the anointment from the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, continue to be upon you. Amen. So Advent is here. For many, it's the run-up to and the preparation for Christmas. Or for others, it's about 25 chocolates on a bit of cardboard. For still others, this is when Christmas begins. Is that what's ready about? Anyone? Advent begins the Christian calendar. Have you ever heard that there was a Christian calendar? Advent begins the Christian calendar. Today is Happy New Year for Christians. Today is the New Year. The Christian church begin, the Christian calendar begins on Advent Sunday, and the last Sunday in the year is the Feast of Christ the King, which we celebrated last week. And Caroline has put the Christian calendar on the screen so that we can see it. Advent is traditionally celebrated from the Sunday nearest to the 30th of November, but modern calendars start the countdown on December the 1st. 
which I think began some 250 years in Germany. That's why a lot of them start from the first. You see, in the Christian church, we have what is called a lectionary. Anybody know what that is? Carry in one hand. A lectionary. Looks like a Bible. It is a Bible because it's full of Bible passages. Old Testament, Psalm, New Testament, Epistle, all in there. A lectionary. And what's also in there is that canon calendar. It tells you the different seasons and feast days in the Christian church. The lectionary is like a calendar if you use it. It's, as I said, a series of feast days and Bible readings to go by Sunday by Sunday. So this Sunday, the lectionary begins a cycle which is called Year A. So we were in year C, we've now moved to year A. So let me see my orders and service says year A. What on earth does that mean? It is saying we have started a new cycle. So we are now in year A. So there is A, B, and C. So next year will be year B. The idea of the three year cycle is to, if we follow it Sunday by Sunday, one would have read most of the Bible in three years. That's the idea. That one would have read most of the Bible in three years. So I was saying to somebody earlier, I can use the same sermon in three years' time. And I have done that, and nobody remembers. <laughs> so back to Advent. Does anyone know what is the real meaning of Advent? Anybody? The real meaning of Advent, why do we have it? Why has it come up? Somebody said to prepare. My other question would be what we're preparing. <laughs> Preparing Christ's coming. You might think it's a trick question. But has he not come yet? What's more? Something, there's something more. The second coming. We forget that bit. The second coming. We think, oh, that's it now. He's come already. We're singing some ancient things. That's, no, he is coming again. You see, the real meaning of Advent is the word coming or arrival. Adventus, Latin word, Adventus. Have you heard of the Seventh-day Adventist church? That's all they preach about. Preparing yourself because he's going to come anytime. That's why they call Seventh-day Adventists. So you go to the services and a lot of it will be about preparing ourselves. And I think we as Christians should be doing that every Sunday also. So it comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means coming or arrival, to signify the birth of Jesus Christ, the, the one who will, the one we as Christians follow, reminding us that Advent has to do with the second coming of Christ. As I said before, Advent is the start of the Christian year. Advent today is a time we look forward to when Jesus will come again. We as Christians believe Jesus is the Son of God, so we celebrate all the happenings that is leading up to his birth. In most Christian denominations and churches, Advent lasts for four weeks starting four Sundays before Christmas Day. And now we are on Advent 1. So I'll ask the question again, why do we celebrate Advent? Anybody? 
We spoke about what was the what was the word prepared. What else do we do in Advent? It's a time of waiting, yes? Anything else? Who likes waiting? Especially those who can, um, catch the bus like myself. <laughs> who likes waiting? Preparation, waiting, anything more? We get impatient, we give up. We go and do something else. Nobody likes waiting. Anything else about Advent? Why do we celebrate? Well, the basic thing is about preparing for his coming. The coming of Jesus, not as a baby in a manger. That was the first Advent. <coughs> but we now look forward to his second coming. And we say it in the historic creed, he will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom shall have no end. We say it in the creed, that's what we believe, our statement of faith. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. The said king has his kingdom, Jesus Christ the king. Advent, as we said, is a time of preparation, a time of waiting, a time of readiness, a time of watchfulness for his coming. A time to sort ourselves out. Advent is a time to clean up the mess that our lives are in, in God's world. A time to make things right with God and to make things right with others with one another, a time to try to be in the right frame of mind and not worrying about things. We worry because we have not done what was right. And this is a time to put it right. No one wants to go to the grave with unsolved issues or Christ coming and finding us in a mess. Nobody wants to be like that. Our gospel reading which Sally read for us today from Matthew chapter 24. We'll go back over and read it. Matthew chapter 24 verse 26 calls us to be watchful. Verses 36 and 42 and 44 <coughs> It says, but not about the day or the hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Not even the angels know when Jesus is coming back. Not even Jesus himself knows when he's coming back. Verse 42, keep awake. Therefore, for you do not know the day when your Lord is coming. Therefore, you must always be ready, always be ready for the Son of Man, which is Jesus, is coming at an hour you do not expect. And then I think it goes on to say about, if you knew when the thief was coming, you'd prepare for the thief. You can put CCT camera or whatever, you still don't know when the thief is coming. Jesus too will come like a thief. In the night. None of us know the day or the hour when Christ shall return. None of us know the day or the hour when Christ shall call us home. First day night I passed out. The next thing I heard this woman saying, I thought I'd lost you a few seconds now. I did not know. None of us know when something is going to happen. It is important that we are ready. So as Christians, we are called to remain alert 
always ready and watchful, like a good boy scout or guide. It is good, my friends, that we don't know the exact day or the hour. If we knew, I guess many of us might be tempted to be lazy, take our time in working for Christ. Worse still, we might plan to keep on doing the wrong things we're doing and then turn to God near the end. I know a lot of people in their young years, they don't want to know about Christ. They said, maybe when I get older. Some of them never make it to be older. But my dear friends, too late shall be the crime. Don't you remember what happened when the bridegroom came out to find the bride? It was too late, the door was shut because they were foolish, they were lazy, and they did not prepare themselves by taking extra oil. Those would be like the, the foolish virgins. Friends, heaven is not the only goal. We have work to do here before we die. We have work to do here before we die or before Christ comes. The work is such as supporting the weak, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick and those who are imprisoned by many addictions. We have work to do here, like working with care, Dewsbury, warm spaces, food banks. We have work to do. We have work to do in the town. Yes, there is work to be done. And people like Caroline can tell us the work we need to do. Caroline, there's a lot of work to be done. We need to support the ongoing work. But in doing that work, we are to keep alert. Because when we are doing that work, we'll pick up things, we'll gather things. Keep alert with what is happening around you, with what is happening in your neighborhoods and on your streets and in the nation and in our world. Keep alert with the signs of the time, even change. Keep alert means being watchful. Watchful for the signs also of God at work. I struggle sometimes in some church meetings when I say let's have a conversation on the work of God. What has God done in the last week? Or what has God done since we last met three months ago in a certain meeting? And everybody's quiet. And I can't believe it if we're Christians and not, we're not seeing God done something. It's not God's not at work. Where are we? Are we sleeping? Or are we awake to what God is doing? Keep alert at what is happening around us. Keep alert means keep an eye on answered prayer. Being watchful to what God is saying to us through people and through scripture. Friends, today, are you ready? Try and remember that image on the screen. Are you ready? You know why? Because we are all running out of time. From the day we were born, we began to run out of time. So we must keep awake, alert, because Christ is coming at an unexpected hour, the scripture told us, tells us, second coming. Keep awake, therefore, or you do not know the day or the hour when the Lord is coming. Friends, Christ's second coming will be swift. Christ's second coming will be swift and sudden. There will be no last minute opportunity for bargaining or repentance with God. 
the choice we have already made will determine our eternal destiny. Are you ready? Are things in place? Am I ready? My dear friends, today and in the week ahead, and during this Advent, pause. Pause and take stock of your life. Pause and take stock. What are the things I need to sort and put in place? Let that question stick in your mind. Are you ready? Am I ready? For Jesus the judge is coming at an hour we do not expect. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite us to pause and let's be quiet. As we try to make sense out of that Bible passage and out of what maybe I've said here today. I remember that hymn that says, Come to my heart, Lord Jesus, for there is room in my heart for you. We're going to sing our offertory hymn, which is 169, that speaks about, Come thou, long expected Jesus, born to set your people free. After which we will bless the offering, and Caroline will come and share with me in some prayers. 169, come thou long expected Jesus. <laughs>
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite Caroline to come and join me as we pray. On this Advent Sunday, we come. We come with many different emotions. We come with awareness that Christmas is approaching. For some, that will be a time of great joy. For others, a time of stress and busyness. We come to you knowing that the world is full of tinsel, glitter, and mindless music played on a loop. <coughs> but we yearn to see your face in the midst of all the preparations. We want to look to the future because you have gone ahead into it for us. We may not wish it could be Christmas every day, but we do recognize that the real truth of Christmas is with us every day that God came into the world to redeem us. So however we feel today, help us to find you, not in the razzmatazz, but in the quietness of the stable. Be awake, be ready, be prepared. Our King is coming at an unexpected hour. Well, we know how much preparation we need to do before Christmas. There will be the cards to write, presents to buy, food to purchase, invitations to be made. We are so aware that all this stuff sometimes get in the way. We are also aware that for many this year, their normal Christmas will be affected by the high cost of living. Help us, help each one of us, and help us all to see that the truth of Christmas <coughs> is not related in the things and the wealth, but in the poverty of God in the manger. Be awake, be ready, be prepared. Our, Our King, King is, is coming, coming at, at an, an unexpected hour. At this Advent time, in all that we do, help us, Lord, to keep our eyes and ears open to see you among us. We pray that we will find you in the face of a friend and a stranger, that we will worship you in among all the fun and family time. We pray that we will be your compassionate hands and feet and lips to those around us who are hurting, afraid, homeless, lonely and overwhelmed. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and make us fit to serve you. Be awake, be ready, be prepared. Our, Our king, king is coming at, at an unexpected hour. Lord, we bring to you all those we know who are making preparations for school. It might be those revising for exams, those preparing for operations or medical procedures, those arranging to travel to new or unfamiliar places, those preparing for a birth or even a death. Those preparing for marriage. Lord, 
feeds the present. Be in Emmanuel to all those people. Some known to us, but all know to you. In our prayers today, I invite us to call out the names of the people who need God's healing hands and those who are going to be making preparations. Feel free to call the names. Alan. Nancy at family. Marlene. to you all those in our pastoral group where we have been praying, you know that the Lord we bring them before you. Lord, give diligence in the working, patience in the waiting, courage in the unfamiliar situations. Your presence at the end and at the beginning. Help everyone to be alert to your presence in every situation they face. And help us all to make our eyes firmly fixed on you. Whatever we are experiencing in the weeks to come. So friends, be awake. Be ready. Be prepared. Our, Our king, king is coming. Is coming the unexpected, unexpected hour. Lord, our Emmanuel, we know we can only be fully prepared for life if we are fully focused on you. Keep us from distractions, we pray. Help us to find creative ways to learn more about you and deepen our relationship with you, even within the old familiar stories. Help us also to be prepared to step away from the familiar into new things, following where you lead as you challenge us to become closer to you. So let us be awake be ready, be prepared. Our King is coming at an unexpected hour. Lord, prepare our hearts, open our eyes, and help our eyes to be open to see you. Teach us to be ready for anything you ask of us this week. Give us eyes and ears to see where your kingdom is coming around us and to join you in your work, in our community, in our world. Be awake, be ready, be present. Our King is coming at an unexpected time. Lord, come to our hearts, come to our homes, come to our communities and our world and help us to be ready to find you. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. As we leave this place, I want to say a word of thanks to Jennifer and 
to uh, Caroline and the rest of you who have seen me and welcomed me and made things away in place. Thanks to um, David on the organ. Always remember the organist. Always remember the organist. Thanks to um, Joe on the um, audio visual. And we pray that God will continue to bless the work of this church. I think two people are coming in. If somebody wants to go and welcome them, or just yeah, order somebody out there. I'll find out in 732. 732. Day of judgment, day of wonder. Listen to the trumpet sound. We're told in the Bible that there will be one day when the trumpet will be sound. But the, the, the whole Bible is full of pictures of the end time. Um, they said there'll be trumpets and all sorts of things happening in the sky. I think that's where they pick up that kind of story. But the words are good. Seven, two, three. Day of judgment, day of wonder. See the kingdom I bestow, God of mercy, friend of sinners, we shall then your glory. Lord, I pray that in all our preparations this coming week and all our preparations for Christmas, we may find time to spend time with you. Help us to be prayerful watchful, and full of hope for your coming. And that we may say it is well with our soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Continue to love and care for one another. And the blessing of God, which is Father, Son, and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. God bless you.